Hello friends, welcome to any 3 ds Max tutorials. This is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today finally, finally we are getting into edit poly or editable poly. Uh, now this is the main modeling technique uh, of 3 ds Max and uh, I'm sure that this is the one uh, method that you will use a lot throughout your 3D modeling career. So let's start with creating an object. What Edit Poly does is uh, it, it allows you to bend the object with uh, sub-object modes. In a minute, we are going to see all the sub-object modes, but uh, let's say we create a box. Let me show you what uh, this is useful for first. Uh, let's go to Create Geometry Standard Primitives Box and create a box. Uh, there are th two methods that you can convert or add Edit Poly uh, properties to an object. First one is to right click, go to convert to edit poly, editable poly, uh, which will convert this object to a, an editable poly object. Uh, before I click here, I want you to see that we have a box in our modifier tab and we have box parameters or box properties uh, in our modifier tab. But if I convert this to an edit poly, you will see that uh, the box object and the box properties are gone and now we have uh, edit poly properties, which we have more control over the object uh, than a box because uh, a box object wants to keep its shape. So uh, its parameters is connected to box width, height, segments like things. But edit poly doesn't care about those things. Edit poly allows you to select every little element on an object and uh, play with those or move those around. Uh, to uh, show this to you, uh, I'm going to go to one of these sub-object modes, which uh, are under the selection tab, as you can see. And you can just click on vertex, for example, and go to this vertex, uh, this corner of the box, and select it and move it around. And as you can see, this creates an, uh, an M of uh, object, I guess, or, or more organic shape if you uh, like to do that. Okay, you can see that we can play with all the corners. The only thing that we are allowed to is not the move tool, the translate tool. We also have rotate and scale tools. Uh, let's go to an edge, uh, select an edge, for example. To do that, we need to go to the edge mode, select this edge, for example. Uh, you can see that I can move this around as well, but also I can rotate this, hitting E, I can rotate this, or hitting R, I can just scale this as well. Okay. Okay, this uh, will allow us to create any shape we want. In a minute, I'm going to create a an example, a real uh, life example. But first, uh, let's see the other method that we can have these uh, properties in here. Uh, let's delete that box and create a new one. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm going to undo this because I want to show you something. If you are under an, a sub-object mode and hit delete, it will only delete that selected sub-object. So, what you need to do to delete an object is to get out of this, which you can do with clicking on the sub-object that's selected. If you click this again, you can see that it gets out of the sub-object mode and then you can delete the object hitting delete. Okay, then let's create a new box. The second method is to add an, a modifier from the modifier list. You can just click here, uh, hit ED to go uh, to edit stuff. And you can see edit pull in here. And if I click on this, you can see that we can keep the box and also have the edit poly uh, properties features. Again, you can use these subject modes. By the way, the, the show, I'm going to show you the shortcut for these and uh, mostly I'm using the shortcuts. So I want to let you know this so that you won't get lost following me. Uh, you can hit one to go to the vertex mode, two for the edge mode, three for the border, four for the polygon mode and five for the element mode. I went over these a little bit quick because uh, they are, as you can see, they are uh, quid uh, according to your keyboard, one, two, three, four, five, okay? And if we had uh, other sub object modes in here, you could just go ahead and hit six, seven, eight, and they would work as well. I guess edit poll is the one with the most sub objects, but uh, I'm not really sure because, because 3ds Max has a lot of plugins and scripts uh, editions as well, so maybe they have more subjects. I'm not really sure. Okay, as you can see, we ha we have the same properties, same um, abilities, same uh, things we can play around with. Uh, the difference between these two is you can go back to the box mode and play with the dimensions and stuff, and you will see that uh, it will apply the output on top. 
let me show that to you. If you click on this show end result button, uh, you can see the end result while playing with the box parameters. And if I just increase the length of this, you can see that it behaves accordingly. Okay, if uh, we think only about this uh, property, edit poly seems much more useful. So why would we ever want to use uh, editable poly? The answer to this is I, I mostly use edit poly, by the way, the modifier one. Uh, so maybe you will want to use this as well. But you need to be careful about uh, this edit poly modifier. The reason is if you change the segment count, if you, if you play with the length, width and height, there is no problem. But if you change the segment count, then you will see some unexpected results. Let me show you. If I increase the length segment, for example, you can see that the uh, box banded in a way in an undesired way, I guess, uh, or at least unexpected way. <laughs> we couldn't calculate what's going to happen if we click uh, on these buttons here. Uh, the reason for this is uh, Edit Poly looks for the uh, vertex numbers and you change the vertex numbers. So numbers of the vertices or the uh, IDs of the vertices has changed. So uh, let's say we move this one. This is the vertex one. Let's say when you change a segment, this is no longer vertex one. Vertex one is here, for example. Okay. So uh, the IDs changed. So Edit Poly doesn't recognize which vertex we moved or which edge we moved or which polygon we moved. So to sum up between these two methods, if we are not going to increase the segment count or change the segment count, because this also uh, does the same thing when you decrease the segment count as well. Uh, so if you, you are not going to change it, you can play with it. Uh, with edit poly but if you are going to change it or uh, if this confuses you let me say then you i recommend you to at first at least i recommend you to uh, convert the objects to edit, editable poly objects okay so again to sum up you at first i recommend you to use editable poly but uh, when you get used to it you will naturally shift to edit poly modifier okay uh, now that we are over this let's delete this object as well and create another primitive because I want to show you you can play with different primitives as well. Box is the one of the most used uh, primitive with editable poly. Also plane is the, is another one. But I want to show you some other uh, things. Let's say we want to create a teapot for example. And apply an edit poly on top of this. You can see that you can also play with this object as well. Okay. And even if you bend this for example. Let's say we added a parametric modifier and banded this then add an edit poly right now you can play with the vertices and edges as well okay so this is a very powerful tool you can um, change the shape of any object you want uh, with this okay uh, by the way i'm going to show you one more cool trick uh, in the in this ribbon you have a free form tab and if you're in edit poly you will see these uh, these uh, commands are enabled and there's a command called shift, which is very useful. I use this a lot. Uh, this allows you to edit the object just like in ZBrush. This is very cool. I use this a lot, so I really recommend you to try this out. Okay. <laughs> this is the ugliest thing I've ever modeled, I guess. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to show you is the, I want to go through the sub-object mode. There are a couple sub-objects. Let's go with the cylinder this time. You you can see that it will work in this one as well. A any object you create is actually, uh, it will wor work on those. So let's add an edit poly modifier. If you hit one, you can see that you can just manipulate the vertices. If you hit two, you can see that you will be able to select the edges and move them around. Okay. If you hit three, which is the border mode, under border mode, actually, this object has no borders. So let's first create some borders. To do that, I'm going to hit 4 to go to the polygon mode and delete this top face. Then I'm going to go back to 3. What border selects or uh, allows you to select is this opening on top. Okay. If you your object has an opening anywhere, you, you will be able to select that with one click. This is very cool because you can select this and just cap it, for example. Or you can add new edges holding shift. You can add to this edges. If you hold shift and move this around, you can see that it doesn't move it, but creates a copy of the, that uh, edge or border. Uh, but this will also work in the edge mode, by the way. 
can see that this is a very powerful technique. This is called edge extrusion modeling. And uh, I'm going to show this to you. Uh, this is very cool. You can model anything with this. Uh, in a minute, actually, we will, we will try this. Uh, okay, uh, we were in borders. Uh, if you hit four, you can go to the polygon mode, which will allows you to select these uh, polygons, the, these faces, let's say. And uh, with five, you can go to the element mode and you can select the whole object. Um, maybe you are wondering what's the difference between selecting the object and selecting the element. Uh, let, let me show that to you. If you create an extra object in here, you can attach these two. Uh, I'm going to get into this in a uh, later lesson, but for now you can just go to the edit poly, click attach and hit the unattached object. And these two objects will become one object, as you can see. Its name is cylinder, but we can rename it edit poly, whatever. And, and now what you can you will see is you can just uh, hit five and this is a separate element and this is a separate element. Uh, so what defines an element is uh, if you don't have any vertices welded to each other between these two objects, that they, they become separate elements. I'm going to show you how to weld objects together. Uh, these are future uh, things we need to worry about, but you, uh, just know that if they are not touching or welded uh, each other, uh, touching is not the right word because you can just put this in it. And again, these are two separate elements. You need to weld a vertice. They need to have a common vertex, uh, I guess at least one common vertex to become one element. Okay. Right now we are over the sub object modes as well. And lastly, let's create a real life object. What I thought of was a spoon. It's easy to model uh, and it's also organic. It's also an organic shape. Uh, let me find you a, a reference for this. Let's say we want to model something like this. Uh, as you can see, it's quite organic and also very simple shape. Uh, I'm, I want to show you how we can create something like this. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to take this as a hard reference. I just wanted to show you uh, my aim as I start the modeling. So you can see this uh, in that perspective, I guess. I'm going to create a plane. Uh, plane, as I told you, uh, is one of the most used base uh, models uh, for an edit poly object because it just starts with one face. Uh, if you choose to, uh, originally a plane comes with a four by four segments. I want you to decrease these to one by one so that we only have a face. Uh, so it's less complicated, I guess. And I want to move this to the origin. Now I want to add an edit poly on top. Now you will see that if I hit two, I can just select these edges, right? And if I just hit R for scale, I'm going to just scale this up a little bit, move this in. And if I hold shift and drag this, you can see that we have a new face and again, hold shift and drag, scale this down and hold shift and drag, drag. And you can see that right away we have a spoon like base uh, object. And this is another thing I want to make clear, uh, which is try to go to the simplest shapes. Uh, it's just like drawing. Uh, actually in a magazine, 3D world magazine, actually it's the uh, one of the uh, highest uh, rated 3D uh, modeling or uh, visual visualization uh, magazines out there. I really recommend you to check that out. 3D World. Uh, in there, I read something um, that says if you want to improve your modeling, try drawing. Because this is just like drawing. In drawing as well, you need to create reference geometrical shapes uh, to be able to define the general shape of the object. Then you go in and add details. Then you go in and add shading and stuff. Uh, so try to think of this as drawing. So this is our basic shape. Okay. Maybe at this stage, you want this uh, basic shape to match the reference as much as uh, you can. So uh, I want to make this part thinner. For example, I'm going to hit four to go to the polygon mode, select these two faces. Hit R for scale and just scale this down a little bit more. And at the bottom in here, I want this to scale up a little bit, right? And then I want to match this a little bit more to my reference. Okay. And now I'm going to add some details. Uh, by details, I mean I'm going to add, add a new edge in here and just tr make this a little bit more round, for example. To do that, I'm going to hit 2, select this edge in here. 
to uh, get rid of the confusion i want to get rid of these selection brackets in here it was j uh, before but it's not j uh, anymore so i'm going to go to edit faces per view preferences and click on the selection brackets and hit okay okay now we can uh, see a little bit more clearly i guess so i'm going to hit two to go to the edge mode select any of these edges i'm going to hit ring which will select the parallel edges and hit connect to add a new edge in here there are of course easier ways to do this but uh, for now this is a very basic uh, method it has uh, advantages so i want to i want you to get used to this using this i'm going to show you some shortcuts for this and you will see uh, it's not that uh, hard to use and i'm going to hit this ok button and then i'm going to scale this up a little bit and you can right away see that we have a smoother edge in here you of course you can add more edges like this and scale this up as well but the problem with this is we need more control so as you add more edges we lose control over the model so i don't recommend you to uh, do this uh, what i'm going to do to delete this uh, is i'm going to hit control backspace we'll talk about this but you can delete edges with this shortcut uh, but this roundness is enough for me because i'm going to add a smooth modifier or turbo smooth modifier on top and you will see that it will uh, automatically make this edge uh, rounder or perfectly uh, smooth okay let's add some more detail i'm going to select this edge now and hit ring and you can see that it selected all the uh, parallel edges and hit connect again this time i'm going to increase the segments i'm going to add three segments then i'm going to just hit four select these polygons and pull them down a little bit and you can see that we have a spoon like um, shape in here let's hit t to go to the top view and i'm going to just move these vertices up a little bit this one as well and you can see that on the edges we have these smoothness as well okay uh, maybe you want to add uh, select this edge ring and add a new edge to this side and scale this up to make it a little bit more round but whatever uh, this is just the beginning so don't worry about these things that much but let's do this for this edge as well don't be a perfectionist if you are a 3d modeler but i'm a little bit of a perfectionist so whatever uh, hit one select these vertices and move them up so that we have this curve on the uh, spoon maybe add an add a new edge in here and a new one here as well then i'm going to just select these two vertices and move them up as well and you can see that i can bend or just move and do anything and it started to look like a spoon maybe you uh, this uh, portion is a little bit too big then you can just select all these vertices and scale them down you can see that it's very advantageous you can uh, do all kinds of crazy stuff with this okay then i'm going to add a smooth modifier on top of this which will smooth out these faces in here i'm going to click auto smooth and you can see that we have a smoothed face in here uh, you can also add turbo smooth but it's a little bit early for this i'm going to show you how to work with turbo smooth a little bit uh, more or in depth so that you have more control over it but for now let's just use some actually it worked for this example so let's leave turbo smooth on uh, but it's a little bit complicated because you have some uh, smoothings over here as well you, maybe you don't want this it fitted this uh, model but maybe it wouldn't so you need to have more control over this but for now let's use it no, uh, whatever you can increase the iterations from here by the way to make it even smoother and you can see that uh, it's just like we have a rounded edge in here so it doesn't really show uh, on the render or viewport as well okay so let's give this a thickness which uh, which we will do with shell modifier let's increase the thickness a little bit uh, right now we don't we didn't use any dimensions or whatever but it's a little bit big <laughs> but whatever okay in edit poly you can add uh, chamfers or fillets to these edges as well uh, i'm going to talk about that one as well and also maybe we need to fix these edges a little bit to do that i'm going to t on these round corners we use a different method actually so uh, it looks a little bit weird when you smooth it 
Uh, that was what I was talking about uh, when I said using edit poly. I'm going to add some uh, edges with cut, uh, which is in here. You can just let me undo this. You can just hit cut and draw edges as you like. We will talk about this one as well. So don't worry about it if you miss this. Uh, but when you smooth that one, it will look smoother on those edges. You can again play with the result. Uh, we can also add um, symmetry. Uh, so we will only worry about one side. But those are future subjects. Okay. All right. As you can see, this is a good looking spoon. And you see that we can create any shape we want with uh, Edit Poly. And this was our first example. I'm waiting for your uh, spoon models uh, in uh, CGK Facebook page or my Instagram page. You can just tag me and uh, send them to me. And I'm going to just uh, try to uh, write a response for each one. Uh, okay, hope this was useful. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you find this useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. See you in the next lesson.